Yep. I'll give you the two thumbs up, and then we will be good to go. All right, hold on, wait. I'm going to turn up for the intro. Yeah, yeah, give, me, you give me an intro. I'll say, you introduce the show, your name, and then I'll say my name, and then... Try not to swear, because the first... Like, Try not to swear in the first six... Oh, six yeah, it's like the first sec 90 30, seconds yeah. or some You shit. already swear. know what was about to go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Stop the yeah. play. Yeah. Three, two, one. What the f is good, yo? We out here. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Can we do, redo it? Let's get back into it. What's going on? We're at the Stop Playing Podcast. We have a very special guest here tonight. We can't wait to introduce her. Me and SBG are here. We have crazy topics to get into. We have a uh, lot of topics to get into tonight. We got a lot of topics to get into tonight. We can't wait to do it. There's some really cool stuff from the camp that we want to talk about. There's some random stuff we want to talk about. There's some important stuff in the world that we want to talk about. We can't wait to do it. Let's go. All right, first topic. <coughs> Sugar Sean fight. Stunning. God damn. Right? It was a stunner, dude. We were watching it at uh, Cap's house. We were at my house. Actually, on your birthday. Dirty 30. Yep, Dirty 30. Stopped birthday. playing one time. And uh, yeah, that shit was fucking, I mean, that was incredible. Yo, man, the dude's turning into a superstar. Yep. Did you see the, there's clips going around of Connor's fight when Connor first won his belt? Yeah. It's the it's same exact motion, matchup. Yep. same shot, everything. It's same body, same stance when the punch is thrown. It's the same way they're standing over the opponent. It's the same finish. It's, yeah, yeah. everything's the Beautiful. same. Beautiful. Yeah, he, I mean, Sean kind of is the new Connor McGregor of UFC. I, I mean, I, I'm confident so there, that. So there's, there's uh, Sean, and then there's the, the, the guy that we want, Izzy, yeah. we saw before. Green's uh, super into UFC. I, I'm Big like, time. I'm into it. I was a wrestler in high school, but Green's really kind of got me back back into the UFC I've scene. I've got the whole gang back into it now. Yeah, nah. Wally real. too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But yeah, uh, so for those who don't know, Sugar Sean O'Malley, um, one of like the new fighters in the UFC. Um, he's the guy with the, he dyes his hair a different color every time. Fought for the title last weekend. Was the, a big underdog. Uh, everyone was thought he was going to lose. Aljo Sterling. Aljo Sterling, which I do not agree with, but they gave out all, all three uh, judges gave him the first. The first round. round, I know. Yep. I mean, the first round. I I'm not even mad at that because if, if Sean was basically spending that, he didn't even throw a punch the first round, which right. was kind of what led to the second round knockout because he kind of like doled him to sleep a little bit. He got comfortable. The wrestlers started throwing punches, and that's when Sean hit him with the counter. But um. Yeah, no one, no one had Sean uh, winning that fight. No, nope. you know, even I was doubtful. I was just hopeful. Yo, that he I was actually it. back in his comments, and there was so much shit talking. Like early stoppage. Yeah, yeah, we gotta talk about the early stoppage. That's that's the big combo right now. Did you, did you think it was early? No, no. See, I I understand the argument. Um, when the arms are flailing and your back's turned, like it's down. Right. What are you gonna do? Right. Not to mention that first punch, his head, he got hit and his head went straight to the canvas and he only woke up because his face smacked the ground. Yeah. And that's kind of what kept him going. The, the whole argument with the early stoppage is that um, it's a championship fight, let the champion go out on his shield and get knocked out. Um, but the thing is, you could argue the early stoppage, but I still believe that if the ref didn't stop it, that Sean was still going to end up finishing it you know seconds later so yeah it's one of those things where you know i mean it's a sport and it's entertainment but at the end of the day like you do have to worry about the health of, of and, and it's not worth it for an extra 10 seconds of someone getting their face punched in to and get that concussion. put someone's health in jeopardy it's right like, yeah, no i agree I, I think the stop it was a good stoppage um I, I think even if he didn't stop it, that Sean would have stopped it himself shortly after. So I think the whole kind of argument's null and void. Clean yeah. punch. Dude hit the mat. It was over. Beautiful moment, though. Iconic. Um, and yeah, now Sugar's the new champ. And I think he's going to fight, um, it looked like he's going to fight Cheeto Vera next. Uh, yeah, I saw, someone, I saw someone else comment saying, you're not the champion until you defend the belt. Yeah, I mean, fair. Fair. But not true. Yep. Actually, not true. Pizza's here. What can I do? Um, oh, so what? Yeah, you have to explain this a little bit to me because I'm still not even fully up on the advanced nutrients. Um, 
cultivator series? Mm. What is that? Like a new line of nutrients? So advanced nutrients has been known kind of like the, the reason why me and advanced jive so well is because like CMS, um, I like to think of us as the quality cultivators. And what, what that, I don't mean that other people don't grow a good product. I mean, what we do is we focus on craft and on results, right? That's what we do. And um, I've been growing with Advance for nine, uh, no, I'm sorry. I've been growing with Advance for over 10 years now. I was 19 when I started using Advance, so I just turned 30. Um, but, but basically the, the niche that Advanced has always had is um, they're, they've always been more expensive, and, but for the, all the right reasons, they have uh, additives that it's a never ending list of stuff. And, I mean, you, you can experiment, put things in and take things out and, you know, um, they make it really easy for the first time grower too. They have pH perfect mixes. So basically when, you know, when we feed our plants, we want our pH levels to be anywhere from 5.8 to 6.2. Mm -hmm. When you use advanced nutrients, it automatically does it without having to add pH up or down. Mm -hmm. So same way you have to adjust the pH levels in a pool or the chlorine levels, right. advanced nutrients, it does it on its own. It's their own technology. Yeah. So, but the problem was is that the nutrient line is genuinely more expensive um, than other lines, but it's because of the quality. Right. Now, what that means is other lines that, uh, that are out that are a lot cheaper, um, it, it, it draws more attention from the bigger cultivators because what happens when you can run uh, X line for 10 cents a gallon when advanced is, and it, I'm making these numbers up, when advanced could be six, 70 cents a gallon. I mean, as a cultivator and as someone who has to pay their bills and play, pay employees, you really look at those costs. Yeah. Um, so advanced nutrients, advanced nutrients dropped the cultivator series and it's a three part, it's a powder. Um, oh, the powder. It's yeah. a 14 part powder, which is kind of out of this world. And um, it's something that's really not happening right now. And you can either run the powders and throw the liquid additives in, or they just came out with the Voodoo. It used to be Voodoo Juice. Now it's tabs for a fraction of the price. Um, and, and so they're really opening, opening things up to the commercial side of things. Uh, but still holding that advanced nutrients quality. So it's oh, the, the powders cheaper, way cheaper. No shit. The powders, um, the powders compete with the top nutrient lines, um, Athena drip, uh, you know, all, all the top nutrient lines that are a little bit cheaper. Um, but advanced is now able to compete at that, that cent that per price gallon point. price yeah. point for yeah. sure. So if you're not that's running cool. advanced, you better switch over to that because that's where all the real terps are at. Mm -hmm. Where can people get CMS, what's available still? And then, yeah, just answer that first. Right now, <clears throat> I would say the best option is at Solar in Warwick. I know Mother Earth just got the rose petal pre-roll packs for the first time. Those are just about to, those are about to release for the weekend of September 1st and 2nd. So if you are... Uh, if you are looking to purchase CMS products, September 2nd at Mother Earth, I'll be there with two to three other cultivators, and we'll have some crazy deals on rosin, pre-rolls, flour, uh, not so much flour because we're, we're pretty much out, but rosin and pre-rolls for sure. We're going to get some stuff cooking up. The rose petals line is going to drop, and, um, and we're, we're, fully, we're fully on track to have a, a fruitful September with new flavors and and multiple multiple different SKUs and products rolling what, out. What new flavors are dropping? Double Dipper Live Rosin's coming out. Fire. Splenda's gonna be released in the form of our disposable vapes. Um, cookies and cream cold cures coming out. We have uh, we you know we got Splenda. We're gonna be entering the Cultivators Cup with the pharmacist. That's gonna be a cool event. Yep. Uh, we have a Breeders Day coming up, uh, Breeders Barbecue, September 30th with GrowGen. I'll have Copycat Genetics, and uh, I'll have some stuff from Belief on deck. I'll have uh, uh, Honey Sticks might be in the parking lot that day. So uh, September 30th, if, you, if, if, if you're looking to grab seeds, uh, we're going to be at GrowGen. It's going to be the Breeders Barbecue. There's going to be great deals on genetics, and we're going to give back to the people as well. Fire. So, Speaking of uh, exotic genetics... Let's do a little unboxing real quick. Yeah, this just landed. 
Shout out Exotic Genetics. Um, Shout out um, Stimmy. Big Stimmy. Big Stimmy. Big Stimmy. Shout so out Big Stimmy. This came in, and you know me, I'm a, I'm a, a genetic hoarder, as they would say. Every day, I would say I come into the grow, and then uh, the, I look at Bunt, and the first thing I'm doing, I'm like ready to pop more seeds. And Hunt's literally like he's so fed up with me. He's so sick of me being like, hey, dude, fuck, more seed packs going out, you know? He's so fed up with it, but I, I just, I'm just so addicted to it. So I love new flavors. I love new strains. I got a whole box here of stuff that's unreleased, um, never before seen from Exotic Genetics, and we're going to be bringing this to the next level. So we got a, a, the big Stimmy action figure here. Shout out Exotic Genetics. These flavors are crazy. We have... Um, you know, we have a bunch of cool stuff here. So with this example, this 100K, this 100K pack, is it's feminized. This is white truffle times red runts. We have trash panda, which is super boof times milk and cookies. Um, we have a uh, reckless rainbow times next level. Um, we have elephant ears times milk and cookies. And we have the whole OMFG line that's unreleased. We have the Gary Poppins line. We have some older stuff that he sent us. So we have a whole array of genetics that we're going to dive deep into within these next upcoming months. And we have roughly, I would say, 15 new strains being pheno hunted at the Cultivation Center right now. Jeez. Yeah. Which, which one's your favorite in that box? That, which one are you most excited about? My, I, I'm most excited about Trash Panda. I, oh, have, right. I don't have Trash a super booth cut running right now. Um, the Milk and Cookies line, anything with Milk and Cookies that I've, I've popped from him has been super impressive. So... I know he's not gonna miss here. Even the uh, uh, even the next level line, um, the Falcon Nine stuff, I did really well with. And then we have the whole OMFG line that's unreleased. I mean, this is just, it's, it's what's, just what's the cross with uh, Trash Panda? Trash Panda, that is uh, the Super Boof times Milk and Cookies. Milk and cookies. Right. I mean, yeah. And then Cosmic Twenty Two is Super uh, Boof is an interesting. Baker's movie. Dozen times Falcon Nine. Night Moves is Obama Runs times Scotty Too Hotty. So I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of new flavors in here, and we do the genetics very well. We, yeah, I, I said this in the last episode. I'll say it again. We when we pheno hunt, we run the seed, and then mm -hmm. we flower the seed, and then if if she makes it through, we have cuts that are that are to the side. We'll run it two to three more times to make sure she's stable, mm -hmm. and then we start testing for THC percentage, which I know is not the it's not what we look for. But it also is important. We can't have a 15 percenter because no matter how good it is, it won't sell in this market and we won't be able to pay our bills from it. So, uh, you know, 20 percent or higher really. And then obviously now we, we you know, we're washing a lot of products. So we, we'd like to have uh, uh, stuff that washes 4 percent or more. And um, I mean, th those are the things we look for when we feel it. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm still learning about all that shit. Shout out Exotic Genetics. So we covered some good topics, you know, some, some cool new stuff going on. But we have a very special guest here tonight. Yeah. The one, the only, Dab Cowgirl. Yeah, clap it up, clap it up. Stop playing. Dab Cowgirl is in the building. Howdy. So Dab Stop Cowgirl, playing. as known as? Francesca Serre. Yeah. I'm actually the only Francesca Serre in the world. As it happens. Okay, yeah. So sh you, you mentioned that before the show. How did you find that out? Um, so I was Googling my own name, as uh, many people do, right. you know, um, just out of curiosity. And um, right. I'm actually, like, C-S-E-R-R -R is a very unique last name. Um, I haven't been able to, like, find anybody else that isn't, like, related to I've my family that, that has before. that last yeah. name. And there were other Francescas in my family. I was actually named after my great-grandmother. Oh. Um, mm. She was really special to my mother. Um, like, had, like, a mango garden in her backyard in Florida when my mom was growing up. So, obviously, as a kid, you're like, that's my favorite person ever. Like, I get mangoes when I go there. Um <laughs> Wait, so. so you have the same name as your great grandmother? Um, or... I don't believe her last name was Sarah. I think it was something else because gotcha. that's a Hungarian last name um, oh. that uh, they got from my grandfather. Mm. Yeah, that's fire. Imagine having the only, the only person with your name. My name's John Green. 
Literally, like, <laughs> I, I go to Starbucks and they're like, John and then, like five people stand up. And I we wonder. All figure out my, yeah. I wonder about cord, what that's but. like all the time. Like, all the time. Because, like, whenever Except. I see anybody <laughs> whose name is Francesca, I'm like, oh. You know, because it's like so you few exist? and far between. <laughs> I've met like less than like 10 or 15 Francescas in my entire life. Like, and like I haven't really heard of too many. I knew so, one in high school. That was you it. know? So, you, like, when you were in high school, whenever the teacher said your name, they were like, forgive me. I might get this wrong with your last name. Yeah, did they always yeah. preference it with yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> everybody does that to that me teacher. now. Um, the worst is when I have to spell it like over the phone to somebody at like a credit card company oh, or like yeah. something like that because no matter how many times you say CS, uh, it doesn't make sense to people. Like if they don't hit. see it written down, they don't believe you. They're like SC, yes. Right. And I'm like, mm, CS, no. I'm so sorry. And then like <laughs> I'm really bad at the phonetic alphabet and uh, like lots of the time when I make those kind of phone calls, like I don't know if this is gonna be relatable. I'm high a lot of the time when I have to call like a credit card company or something like that. I'm like, yes. oh, this is gonna be painful. I'm gonna have to wait in a phone line. Let me get like as high as I possibly can, you know? Right, right. So, yeah. um, then I'll, they're like asking me to yeah. spell my last name and I'm like, C, like ch cheese. Right, um, yeah, they start uh, You know, uh, um, <laughs> or uh, like cellophane, you know, <laughs> and, and then like S, like a salamander. I never um, like mess up on the S. For some reason, my brain is always like S, like salamander. Yes, yeah. um, you know. A strong S, S word. For me, yeah. it's always, I say John Green and it's always. Is there an E at the end of that? They never know if it's the but E. But don't they have to ask if there's an H before the N? Yeah, or I get the, is it J-O-N, which it's not. Can't there's an H for some reason, I can't stand the spelling of J-O-N. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just leaving something important out. Yeah. Kind of a little different, but when, like, my name's Zach, but no one knows that. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I didn't even... I, I get that. No one knows my name's Francesca. That's what I'm saying. But I, mean, I was, like, hanging out with Zach for months, maybe. Who? And, like, every who? time someone would mention Zach, I either wouldn't pay attention and think it was they weren't talking about him, or I'd be like, who's Zach? And they're like, Cap. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> That's me. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, it's, it's one of those things. My, like, it's, yeah. It just... I went from ZB, that was always my nickname, and then I entered the, the cannabis industry, especially, like, once the... The traditional market somewhat, but the white market especially, it was just cap. Yeah, I think all of our Instagram names precede us these days. Yeah. Nowadays, I call like, you S I Shop by Green all the yeah, time. I SPG every time I go Yeah, I, I mean, I know you as Dab Cowgirl. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I like it that way, honestly. Like, um, people will like be like, Oh, I'm so sorry, I only know you as Dab Cowgirl. Like, what's your like actual name? And I'm like, You can keep calling me Dab Cowgirl, yeah, first I... of all. Like it is Francesca, but the reason why So you why, don't mind it, right? I don't mind it. I did it on purpose. It's like the reason why I decided to go by Dab Cowgirl is because I like to do dabs. So like you'll see me doing them a lot. Yep. I'm always in a cowboy hat, you know. Um, so it's easy for people to remember. Right. I, I wanted something that was easy for people to remember. So it's Francesca is not that easy to remember because it's not a common name. Right, right. So, like, I love having the name Francesca, but also I wanted something that when I was networking would be easy for people Some to mistake, remember. Yeah. And Dab Cowgirl made sense. And actually, my previous Instagram had gotten deleted. And that's the reason why I came up with Dab Cowgirl was because that's, like, like all creative things, like in well, a pinch, you're like, yeah. oh no. And then the most brilliant thing of your life happens. And you're like, wow. Time to rebrand. Yeah. yeah and you know what? And, 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 and uh, you know, talking about that, uh, like as far as us just being on Instagram, like if there, so you're a, you're an influencer, you're, you work for PAX, right? You do, you do a lot in the cannabis world. So, like, actually, all of the posts that I make on my account for, like, other brands are, like, free, pretty much. Like, I don't get paid to post because I don't have time to, like, negotiate contracts or anything like that. Yeah. So, lots of the time, I'm just posting brands that, like, I like or enjoy That's or, dope, like, that I want to support. Um, and then I work full-time for PAX as the field marketing associate for Massachusetts. Right. Lit. Yeah. And so, back to what I was saying was when I look at... Like the, cause take away the cultivators, but when I look at the cannabis people and the girls, especially like I've not, I haven't known you, but you've stood out. Like I would, I would know you before the other, like all the other. You know what it is? We were talking about that the other night, the green hair brand mm -hmm. move 
was genius. Thank you so much. Genius. Thanks. Um, I, I was talking to her about it. Like, remember, I t came to you one day and I was like, I'm going to start wearing a ski mask everywhere because I'm always on these concert stages. And yeah, that's like anything the... you can do like that that you're willing to stick to, branding wise, it, it really does help. And I was telling you the other night, like, the green hair, I never, I hadn't met you, um, but I would see you, you know, at events or online, and it was just like instantly, it sticks in your head. You can't forget it. You know? It's like you know who I am and you know that I'm showing up, which was important to me. And right. I had the green hair a couple of months after I joined the industry. Um, I actually believe I told you about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was working for a company that, um, like, had a, a really um, obscure, like, hair policy that was, um, let me see if I can remember it correctly. It was um, no offensive, offensive uh, like, um, or it was like no offensive right. hairstyles. Yep. And uh, I was like, okay, that can like be used in a million different ways. And like, that, that's that corporate lingo. They mm -hmm. keep it open so that they can say no to whatever they want. It's yeah. like open ended. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you need to have more guidelines for that, especially when like hair guidelines like that are often used to like discriminate against like specific people. Um, and those specific right. people like, you know tend to be discriminated against for more than just their hair and it's just like you know i was like in my position like i can ask these questions and they're not going to tell me that my hair is offensive you know more than likely and right. i can really like push the case um because of the way i look so i wanted to use that to my advantage and like kind of get an answer so i sent like a really lengthy over the top dramatic email like it was really too much honestly like looking back on it i'm like <laughs> i feel bad for them i have to i like nitpick through every Flamed single them. thing in their lookbook i was like i've got <laughs> questions about this questions about that yeah. like because part of it was that i just didn't like having to wear a uniform honestly and that was mm. something that like i was coming to terms with as like somebody who was like early on in my career right yeah, i had yeah, like just yeah left Starbucks and been like originally like when I joined this company like there wasn't a uniform and then they like oh, Starbucks implemented doesn't one. have any policies um, about Starbucks did dyeing. but like the cannabis company that I worked for early on okay um, okay yeah Not so yet. they sent an executive out that um like told us a really great story about how like the sun rises every day that was like honestly really inspiring despite the fact that i had to show up like 30 minutes early for my shift and um then he went into a story about how like he went to a dispensary in chicago and this girl who was ringing him out had like bright green hair and it was in this huge updo and it was so distracting he couldn't focus on the weed he wanted that's to buy. the word he used distracting mm -hmm. oh. and um that was the example that he used for like you know and now did, was the your kind hair of green? hairstyles was they didn't know my hair wasn't oh, okay. my hair was brown i actually hadn't <laughs> dyed my hair in years um i was like off dyeing so my hair dab cowgirl has brown hair yeah Fun fact. I do. Fun fact. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> like, technically, if you look at the roots, but I will deny it. Um, if you see me in person and ask me, like, I will tell you that my hair grows green out of my head. That's what it is. Yeah. You so, know? how often do you dye your hair? Um, every single time that I take a shower, um, almost, I'm mixing the, um, oh, like, I've dye with conditioner. This. Or yeah, I'm just yeah. straight up putting the dye on my head. It depends on how I feel, like, the vibe of the day, how much, like, of my bathroom getting messy I'm willing to risk, you know? If I'm super high, I'll mix it in with the conditioner, because then if I get it somewhere, like, it's easier to clean up. But if I'm, like, a little bit more, like, I'm, like, feeling confident, my wits are about me, like, I smoked <laughs> the perfect amount of weed, not right. too much, right. not too little, <laughs> then I'll just, like, straight up slap the dye on my hair, like, I think I'm a hairstylist, yeah. and, like, wait 30 minutes and rinse that out and then put conditioner in it yeah because there's like color treated conditioner and stuff that's made for dyed hair right there that is but that's not what i'm using i'm literally just like buying dye and then like buying conditioner separately and mm -hmm. then like putting gloves on my hands and like mixing Fuck them it. together yeah. or just using them at different times you know sometimes yeah. I'll just, you know. so when you dye your hair it's that you buy the same product every time yeah, I've been buying the same hair dye for years, and I actually um, Yo, don't use my own bleach. Send a sponsor real quick. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, what's so, going on? Who's buying like, green like, hair Lori, dye? Lori Lori actually, who? Like, I got approached by um, a company that I can't even remember the name of now. Like, it was a year or a year and a half ago. Um, uh, a company sent me an email about 
like wanting me to promote their green hair dye on Insta, not Instagram, on TikTok. Yeah. This was back um, when I had a TikTok account that actually had like 5,000 followers. I don't have that account anymore. But mm. um, at that time, somebody reached out to me and was like, hey, like we want you to promote this hair dye. And I was like, all the best, but like I'm not willing to risk like my personal brand to try a new brand of green hair dye yeah, um, right. for any amount of money. Like this is up. priceless. Like Lime Crime, if you want to call me and like give me a sponsorship, I would love that. But if you don't, yeah. like, Lime Crime. Lime you know, Crime. I'm going to keep buying now. it. I literally buy it in bulk every single time they have a sale. Um, you know, I, you hear it, Lime Crime. It's I love that. That's yeah, dedication. I love that hair dye. And I bring it to my hairdresser, and she puts it on for me whenever she bleaches my roots. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I'm not bleaching my own hair. Um, I used to do that. Like, when I was, it's like, work. young and in high school and was dyeing my hair all sorts of different colors, but never green, um, because I was never brave enough to do green in high school. Um, mm -hmm. The only reason why I was brave enough to do green was because somebody told me I couldn't, and for that, I am forever grateful. Yeah. Um, shout, out, <laughs> shout out you. For yes. Know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, like shout out to that guy you know who you are thank you so much yeah, like you, know for, you, you pretty much created me <laughs> I, like, this shit. yeah <laughs> can't even express my gratitude um <laughs> and then i actually picked up the cowboy hat to wear to a harry styles concert as um part of a halloween costume because i went to one of the first harry ween concerts that he put on um the one where he dressed up as dorothy you can hear me screaming on his recording of somewhere over the rainbow it was one of the best things to ever happen to me in my life <laughs> And I was wearing this hat, this hat that I'm wearing right now, when I saw that happen. Actually, Same I wasn't hat. wearing it. I was holding it politely because um, the girl behind me told me that it would make it easier for her to see if I took it off. And I'm a nice person. Um, so Dab Cowgirl was birthed at a Harry Styles concert? Um, kind kind of, of almost. But then this hat sat in my basement for months. That and exact one? This this exact hat oh, yeah, that I'm wearing it. right now. See yeah, it's you can it's tell worn. that it's like it's oh, yeah. popping off. Yeah, um, <laughs> this hat's seen concerts. some things. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, and like a lot of dispensaries. This hat has been in so many dispensaries. <laughs> Um, so, and the reason why is because when I started at Northeast Alternatives as a brand ambassador, my first field marketing job, um, Steven Barboza um, trained me and uh, he was so charming and likable. I was like, oh my God, he's so charming and likable. Everybody knows him. Like, how am I going to compete with this? Like, I need something a little bit extra. Like, yes, I have green hair, but I need something. And I was walking out of my yeah. house and I saw this hat and I was like, that'll do. That'll and do. I thought to myself... I'm just gonna wear that for like a little bit while people get to know me. And then it took like a, probably like a very short amount of time, like probably about like less than a month before I realized like I'm gonna be wearing this hat forever. Yep, <laughs> I relate to that. Yeah. I started wearing a, a, a ski mask, like I'd buy a bunch of different colors, same ski mask. Every time I toured with the rapper, I started wearing it on stage. And then I started doing this thing where I would and th this is like a, a, a whole thing with videographers that film tours. Let me, I'm just going to speak on this quick. Everybody fights to get a press pass. And then the press pit just gets filled with 100 camera guys all shooting the same angle. Everyone's fighting to get on stage. So I was like, I literally got sick of it. And I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I got to figure out how to, like, do this differently. Because I, 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 I don't feel like dropping a video the next day after a show. And it's just everyone's got the same video. So I started this thing where I would just go out into the middle of the crowd, start mosh pits, and I'd hold my camera in the middle of it, tell everyone to make a big circle, and then once the song dropped, everyone would rush the camera, and, you know, and it, it's an amazing shot. And then I started doing, like, crowd surfing with the camera. And then so from there, I'd, I remember waking up after an A Boogie show, and it was Bridgeport when we went to Connecticut. Oh, yep. And I crowd surfed during Drowning. Yeah, that was a, dude, that was a that fun was, show. Legendary night, yeah. yeah. I, I'm actually, I went up to security before. We, we gave security weed, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna crowd surf tonight. Like, are you gonna kick me out <laughs> if I do it? And they were, all of them were like, no, dude, pounding me up. They're like, go for it. And then went up to Boogie backstage and his DJ, and I was like, yo, I wanna crowd surf like tonight with the camera. And uh, I knew Drowning was his most hyped song. So, I, I told them both they loved the idea, and the D, uh, shout out DJ Omanaya. Uh, he was like, yo, I'm gonna give you a heads up, like, when you hear me say this, that's your cue to get climb up on the barrier. So he gave me my cue, song was starting. Um, I also talked to the um, fans, front row, 
before the show, I went up to him like, hey guys, I'm Boogie's videographer. I want to crowd surf tonight. Do you, like, are you guys down? And they all gave me thumbs up. So yeah, when the moment came down, crowd surf, sent it. Um, and then next day I wake up and it was just, I don't know how they found me, but people were DMing me videos from all over the arena. You're the ski mask guy that crowd surfed. And I knew after that night, I'm like, I'm wearing this mask wherever I go. And like, I, I kept it on like in all public, anytime I was out in public, I was like, even Cap's uh, weed drops, like at dispensaries, I was showing up in a ski mask. <laughs> don't forget about the, the microphone cover. The microphone cover? Yeah. What, what's that? A boogie on your camera, the mic cover. Oh, yeah. And during the crowd surf, uh, so the first few, I'd say the first five to ten rows carried me. Uh, they were ready for it. Once I hit, like, row eight or ten, I got dropped <laughs> on my head. <laughs> uh, lost my microphone, lost the, the padding to it. And then um, after the show, me and Cap were pretty banged up by the end of the show. And I was like, oh, I lost my mic. We go out back into the arena after it's empty and, like, I'm looking all over. Cap's, Cap's literally not even helping. He's just standing there <laughs> watching me walk around the arena. And then, like, after I walk up back... Bro, I put my hand, like, like on the thing that I was leaning on, and it went right on the no, microphone. No, but I walked cover. up to you, and I, I, was, I called it quick. I'm like, I can't find it. Whatever, I'll buy a new mic. And he's like, is this it? <laughs> I'm like, that's it. Let's yeah. go. Let's, just, let's yeah. get out of here. Yeah, and like, home, and like, I literally put my hand on it. Like, I just put my hand next to me and Giant it was... Giant arena. Yeah. Yeah, and somehow you were sitting next to it the whole time watching me walk around looking for it. <laughs> it just happened to be Ridiculous. right where I was. It was kind of wild. Yeah, but yeah. That, no, that was the, the, the that was a fun night. Yeah. Boogie, yo, shout out A Boogie because hell of a concert. Yeah. Even without, you know, bringing Rowdy and Jay, that it was, it was, it would have been the same. Yeah, that, that was, that was an epic show for sure. Brought out a bunch of special guests. So I, I don't know if you, if you're familiar with Green, but Green has like been in the music, the, the heavy music industry for a long time. He was P Diddy's personal videographer, like Puff Daddy. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So um, Green's like yeah. Cap brought me into the weed world. I, I knew pharmacists uh, years ago. I filmed the first few pharmacists uh, cannabis cups that he did. Um, I don't know if I can say this. It was like black market. Still, I, I believe it was before. It was it was a gray. It was market. the gray market. It was a gray area. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, gray market. Um, for but sure. Then, uh, yeah, I started doing the music stuff, and then Cap called me, brought me back into the cannabis industry, and that's kind of like how the whole a lot of the CMS lore came to be. Um, rappers always smoking it and stuff was because you know I started just saying like, Yo, Cap, come to these shows with me, dude. Bring some weed. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so I have a question for yeah. you. Where is Dab Cowgirl from, and how did you get into the cannabis industry? Um, so where I'm from is a fun and long, complicated question. I was born in Oakland, California, and I moved to Rhode Island when I was around six or seven years old. Yep. Um, what, 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 probably around what, six. Why? Um, my mom felt like it. She's awesome. She's really cool. My mom um, is one of the first like female patent attorneys that yep, was yep, around. Yep. Um, That's she's crazy. yeah, really awesome. She's also um, a lesbian. I personally think that I'm really lucky to be raised by lesbians. Like if you talk to me and you're like, wow, that girl has like a lot of self confidence. Like being Thank raised by mom. lesbians, like you know, like. Hell yeah. Give me so many gifts. Um, and I mom. think uh, both of my moms gave me a lot of self confidence. Um, you know, What's and, the other one do? Uh, my other mother works in healthcare. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't really, I've never understood, like, kind of what she does, but I have always known that she's, like, important. She's one of those people where it's like you call her phone and, like, the voicemail, like, is really long for her title okay, before it right, gets to right. the end. And you're like, wow, that was a lot of words. And I'm not really sure if that really meant anything, honestly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but like, good for you. Um, <laughs> Sounds important. <laughs> so yeah, um, like when I got to PAX, like uh, they asked me where I got my drive, and I was like, definitely like my parents. Um, like yeah. they both like had really good careers because they worked really hard. Wait, so, so how old were you when you came to Rhode Island? I was six years old, and then um, I actually moved back to California when I was 18, and I stayed in San Francisco really? for a couple of years, really? um, and then moved to Red Bluff for one year. Um, I don't recommend Bluff. that. Um, it's right near um, Lake Shasta. Do you guys know yeah. Lake Shasta Sodas? Yep. 
Yep. Um, it's like about like 50 minutes south of that. I, I don't know Lake 45. Shasta sodas. I know Lake Shasta because of UFO stories. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. We'll yeah. we'll, we're going to get into Okay, yeah. We're going to get into the that. UFO also, stuff. Also, I sure. want. Um, you work for PAX. I do. So yeah. what, do you, what do you do for PAX? So um, I ran the field marketing team for Massachusetts. Um, so, so what, is, what does that like include? Just like, the brand ambassadors. So okay. um, and by just the brand ambassadors, I mean, in my opinion, like the best brand ambassadors in the state. I'm so lucky to have them. I have um, five Shout people. Shout out PAX. Five yeah. people working under me right now, which is as many people um, that were in One Direction when uh, they first started as a band. So that's a pretty <laughs> big deal for me personally as a directioner. Um, you know, okay. I, I'm basically like Simon Cowell at this point basically. in my career. All right. yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'd sign off on that. For I sure. Okay. Like I can't speak for Pax um, or the brand, but I love them. Um, I genuinely didn't think that I liked vaping before somebody gave me a Pax. I ended up working for Pax. Because because like about a month before someone texted me and asked if I would be interested in an interview, somebody gave me a Pax vape and was like, here, do you want this? It's like live rosin, try it. Yeah. You still Wait, and, it. Yeah, and, actually, and I was like, I really like this. I fuck with it. And then when they texted me, I was like, actually, it's so funny that you texted me and asked if I would interview with you because you're the only vape company that I would interview with. Yeah. And then after I got hired, they were like, oh, we're doing gummies. And I was like, no shit, I'm a gummy girl. <laughs> that rocks. And then oh, they were like, it. oh, and they're <laughs> melt resistant. And I was like, no way. Like so I can melt? leave them in my car all summer? Yeah. It's no amazing shit. for like a customer perspective, but even more so from a field marketing perspective. Like yeah. I can just have like a car full of gummies, like no problem. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm stuck in the sun for an extra full of day. It's mine. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, if the gummies aren't melt proof, you have to worry about like bringing ice with you all the time. Like yeah. if you stay Keeping overnight in, in a hotel, you have to go out and buy new ice because you can't right. refreeze the ice packs in those tiny little hotel refrigerators. Like it's a whole thing. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. And actually, aren't packs waterproof? You were, you were telling me about um, this. So the bags are water resistant. Asked. So like, they're a good hot proof. They're a hot tub. They're good for hot tubs because the bags are water resistant. Wait, what? It comes in a bag? Yeah, the gummies. Oh, no, oh, the, you mean the, this thing? Yeah. yeah so waterproof? this guy Wait, is hold water on. resistant. First off, what is it? Oh, this is a PAX Era Ultra. Okay. It's the newest um, PAX um, and my favorite, personally. Um, yeah. So like, I could... I could wash my my pants, put that in it, and it's still gonna be good. Or? Um, honestly, like I have never heard of somebody washing this, and it not like nobody has ever DM'd me and been like, I put this through the washer and it didn't work. But about once or twice a month, I get somebody who logs into Instagram, finds my Instagram account, and then DMs me and goes, Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it! I ran my patch through the washer and like it is still working. Still works. Yeah, they'll be like, the pot That's is fire. a little weird, but like the device itself still totally works. And I'm like, you know, oh, I had somebody yeah, told yeah. me they had to put it in rice, but most people tell me it just regularly works. Yeah. You know, um, so I also put that to the test this summer and during Pride in Boston, there was like a torrential downpour and I just like smoked this the whole time, like no worries. That's Fantastic. Um, yeah. That, that's clutch. If, if someone could like really invent like a, a pod like just the whole thing that is just fully waterproof that'd be a kind of a game changer pod and all i'm gonna cut you off it's a very happy birthday oh that's right happy 20th birthday thank you so much yeah, 28 the ounce birthday the ounce birthday thank you right, so let's talk about the ounce birthday because that's something that you've created yes um, so go ahead. Okay. So the ounce birthday, I'm so excited that you asked. Um, the ounce birthday is a milestone birthday for stoners. When you turn 28. Milestone birthday for stoners. Like yeah. It. So yeah. this actually came to me. This idea came to me um, about six months ago, probably around January or February. I was driving for work like I often do, listening to Taylor Swift. Um, 22 was playing. And I was thinking to myself about how like 10 years have passed since I've been 18. Like, so I've been like smoking cannabis like every single day since I was 18. Um, yeah, like, you know, it really <laughs> changed my life. It allowed me Guilty. to get off of pharmaceutical medications. Like, like it has been hugely impactful in my life beyond words. Um, and like, I was thinking about that impact and thinking about like, oh my God, like 
there are literally 28 grams in an ounce. That's crazy. Like, I'm turning 28. And then I was like, I am going to do something with that. Line up. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, if Taylor Swift woke up and decided, like, I'm going to make the 22nd birthday a thing, I can definitely, I was like, I've got like six months. I can definitely come up with some sort of plan to make the 28th birthday a thing. And like, I had a couple of friends be like, Francesca, how are you going to make money off of this? And it's like, I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm trying to create like um, a, thing. a community it's just, it's just a good like, idea. movement. Like, yeah. you know, it's like something to celebrate yourself. It's something to celebrate your relationship with cannabis. Like so often in our lives, we're asked to uh, like, put down our relationship with cannabis or like hide it, you know, or be quiet about it or be ashamed about it. Right. And it's like the 28th birthday is your reason to like be proud of your cannabis usage yeah, like and you, be you, happy. You turn like, 21 rejoice. and you hit up everybody. Let's go to the bar, buy my first legal drink. You turn 28. It's like, we're smoking an ounce tonight. That's what Stop I'm saying. Playing. So speaking of smoking an ounce, my birthday was Sunday. I just turned 30. Big 3 -0. But our Every super, day. thank you, our super special guest, Dab Cowgirl, today is her ounce birthday. Literally. Yeah, Literally, actually, right? like today, today yeah, I was born on birthday. August 24th in 1995. Oh, yeah. So today is so, the day I turned 28 years old. And actually, I turned 28 years old um, while I was here because, um, like, if you're getting down to, like, the minute, because I was born at, like, 4.18 in the afternoon Pacific time. Almost 4.20. So, yeah, almost 4.20. And it was C-section, so it's, like, you could have held out, so I could have been, like, a little bit cooler. But, like, hey. whatever. Like, you know, it's fine. We can... We'll forgive you know, it, I guess. I feel, like you're a <laughs> I feel like you're a girl who's always prepared. So it makes sense that you were born at 4.18. Thank you. Yeah, you're you, right. That's enough time to like find something and make it work. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because if it's 420, then it's like you've already lost right. it. Right. You know? They, they yeah. gave you enough time to get ready yeah. for the 420. But anyway, so what I'm saying is I'm 30, but I feel a little left out. So um, I actually got contacted by Birthdays and my friend Hillary at Northeast Alternatives. Okay. They said that they love the ounce birthday idea. They're big fans. And they want to throw a party for everybody who, like yourself and like my dear friend Hillary King, are slightly ever so over the line to be older than 28 um, yeah. and have missed their ounce birthdays, right? So um, they were like, we're going to throw a party and have it be an ounce birthday for everybody who missed their ounce birthday um, and mm. birthdays is like a have you seen a birthday before I think we have I, I've never seen one no I think we should take a I've look heard about them yeah wait, wait what is a birthday so exactly? a birthday is a candle that's actually a joint so you, you the way that some? it works is it's a joint that has like a little candle topper and so you can like blow out the candle and then actually take off the topper and take the joint wow. off your cake and light it and smoke it. Game changer. Yeah. Actually, I'd happy birthday. I think we it's got charming. one of those. <laughs> yeah, so you a, brought a one. I might have. I might have brought one. You brought, <laughs> not only did you bring one, you brought the Death by Chocolate from Greg's, one of the yeah. illest cakes in the world. We're in Rhode Island and I was like, what other kind of cake Shout would I Greg's. bring um, to do a podcast in Rhode Island other than the Greg's death by chocolate cake? Um, so, so hold on, so we got this, so Thank the birth J is right there on top. Yes. So it has a bottom piece that goes into the cake and a top piece that goes over the joint mm -hmm. and that you can light. Yeah. Okay, and we're then gonna light this. we're gonna light that and at the same time we have a present for you. It's right over here. Um, Hold on, we're gonna. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dab Cowgirl. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so look, wait, we just blew out the. What is this called? Birthday. The birthday. That's blown out now. But we brought you a present right there. So there's 28 grams in this joint here. Alan's birthday. Alan's birthday. Now I know you said you usually do it in the 28 days leading up, but 
Is it cool if we just do 28 yeah, all at can. once since we missed the 28 days before? Mm -hmm. right, yeah, like we can <laughs> absolutely do this right now because it's sandwiched right in the middle is the way I decided to start my celebrating because like as adults, you know, we're 28 years old when we celebrate our ounce birthdays. We can decide if we want to do the 28 days before, 28 days after, or 28 days right. all in like, you know, you compassing know, like around that. it. Yeah. It's like, it's not like 21 where you get like one day and one weekend and right. those are the rules. Which like, is perfect for stoners. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It needs to be a little bit more laid back. Like, if right. I forget for three days that it's my aunt's birthday, like, that's fine. Because, yeah, because so. you'll make up for it. Yep. Okay. We, all right, so we got to let Yeah, we got to do the honors. Okay. Um, okay. Hold on. Are you ready for this, Captain? No. Yeah. I'm not, but I'm, I'm down. I'm not ready. I never turned down a challenge ever in my life. I've never lit a joint like with a torch before. <laughs> so um, I usually just like dabs with torches, hence dab cowgirl. So I will... Do my best. All right. Yeah, might this might. Sheesh. Wow. Biggest torch I've ever seen. This might. Yeah, this might. Oh, this shit. is an experiment too. Yeah. We're. Okay. Yeah. I'm focusing. Damn. Birth birthday stuff right here. You know? God damn. Yo, if your ounce birthday isn't a 28 gram joint, you gotta look at your friends. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Something definitely just happened there. Wow. All right, we're doing this. Okay, yeah, I think we're, I think we're getting lit. I don't know if I'm like lighting it all the way. Boy, I brought is... this in preparation. <laughs> <laughs> this just looks sad now. <laughs> that is sad. Damn, dude, this thing is throwing off some heat. <laughs> Speaking of having good friends, though, I just, like, kind of connected with you guys at your doobies uh, for boobies, like, video shoot. Yeah, and thank you for coming to that, by the that way. That was awesome. I was so glad that Annie invited me. Like, she literally was like, I have this thing, show up. Wear pink. I need you to come. And I was like... So you didn't know anything more okay. than that? No. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. But shout out... Uh, <laughs> but I didn't ask. You know, I'm sure she would have told shout me. Shout out Anastasia, 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 Anastasia uh, Cannabis Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. 2.0? 2.0. 2. 2. 2. She Instagram. has, I think, ownership over both accounts now, but she posts on the backup right. more. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Big shout out to Annie. Um, can't thank her Try enough. to rip this. She came through really big for the whole, <laughs> the whole campaign. <clears throat> So and then all of you guys that showed up. That was, that was awesome. crazy. Like, I did not know any of those facts. Yeah. God, the facts were tough. Yeah. The facts were So like, it's one of those things that, like, so for me, when I started this, this, I, I didn't say this for the campaign, but directly affects my household and my family. So um, that was kind of the motivation behind this. But... The other part is one of my partners who owns CMS Gardens with me, I j today he told me, he was like, well, my mother passed away from breast cancer. And I was like, man, this is just, it's just giving me that much more push to do this. When you're doing something like this, there's always a thought of like, well, is this just this or is this just that? And it's like, nah, like, like is this. Is it being done for the wrong reasons? Right. Yeah. And this really, like, I could give a shit about the money. I, I, I do care about donating, but I don't, it, it, none of it, like, we have real people who are really affected by this, whose families are really affected by this, and it's and all it is is really just to push awareness. Because that night, even though I had all the stuff that I had printed, when I heard someone say it, who it was like, for yeah, real. like I was reading it to myself, and then like reading it out loud, and each time I was like, Ugh. yeah, we were preparing those those facts, you know, the, the a day or two before, and I, I had the same. Ex the same moment everyone had on camera, I had, you know, in my house where I'm reading them, just like, wait. Is this yeah, because you're watching the all of them when are, you're editing them. The numbers are, like, so incredibly scary, like, and high that it's just, like, you have, you literally find yourself just double taking, like, this is, how is this true? Yeah. And then, then you start talking to people and you realize, like, everybody knows somebody affected by it. You know? Everybody. So we're, we're pushing a campaign to raise awareness. And one of the things that we have the privilege of with being um, 
a Rhode Island cultivator and, and you know, producing, you know, high, high quality flowers. We have a, a good platform um, that we've built in the last year. And we're really excited to be able to use those platforms to help raise awareness for the actual, for, for what we're doing. So I've created a pre-roll line and um, it's called Pink Rose Petals. We're gonna be donating a, yep, doobies for boobies. And we're gonna be donating a percentage of our profit to, um, to a local organization. Um, we're gonna make sure that the donation we make is not to a large, um, a large, uh, a large, you know, charity or corporate we want this to go do we want this to be directed at people who this is really going to benefit and 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 nothing against the larger charities um it's just you do also here with the larger charities they have much larger overhead they have a lot of employees that need to be paid so there's more coming out of your donation to keep that machine running um so yeah we we just like to uh (laughs) donate to something more direct I guess is the word. Yeah, like more like direct to people kind of direct, action. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then um, I don't know if you mentioned. Um, so we're selling the pre rolls, and it's going to be what we're donating. What was the ten percent? Ten percent. But what we're going to do is we're going to ask the and a couple have already confirmed that they want to get on board. We're going to ask um, the dispensaries here to match our ten percent. And also, shout out Advanced Nutrients because they really stepped up for me as a partner, and um, they sponsored this whole thing. Yeah. Um, they 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 literally hit me and they were like, "No questions asked. We can match your donation. We can give you a check to to fund. Um, I mean, all this stuff costs money. So um, so they they were just so lenient with what I was trying to do. Shout out Advanced Nutrients for that. And um, and yeah, if you're a dispensary and um, you're watching this and you're interested uh, in being a part of Doobies for Boobies, um, just reach out to Cap, you know, reach Hit out me to up. us. Uh, we're you can carry the in line. the process of we, reaching out to people now, so. Yeah, um, another thing, we've heard that this, we've heard that this is drawing attention um, and we haven't even really released it yet. So there will be a, uh, a higher form of media attention yeah yeah let me clear that up uh there was a real post that went up on my page just iphone clips um so i don't it was cute I, yeah and i and i, 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 I don't it. know if some people are thinking that is the campaign um or the promo route that we're going but i was just behind the scenes shit. yeah, yeah it was like just behind <coughs> the scenes <coughs> media stuff to me so yeah uh yeah the real campaign should be hitting going public next week I believe. Um, so yeah, again, if you're a dispensary uh, in Rhode Island and, and you want to talk to us about uh, being a part of this, please just reach out. Now's the time. Yo, it's your turn, dude. Oh boy. Get that thing glowing, bro. Earlier, you guys mentioned um, that you had your stuff in Solar in Warwick. That's my eyelash artist's favorite dispensary. Yeah, Solar's really special to us. Um, they're right there, like I mean, a minute from my cultivation. Um, so, it's they're a dope store, dope store. They're they're in Massachusetts. Really nice they, their cultivation is um, 100% solar powered, so it's dope. It's dope. We 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 just built our brand new facility. We are recycling 100% of our water, which in the cannabis world is um, it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. of water. So we're recycling 100% of our water, and um, we can't. We're gonna have. As soon as the building's done, because so many people are asking me, as soon as the building's done, I'm bringing out everybody. I'm going to get a food truck to come by. I'm going to let a bunch of people tour the facility. We're going to look at it, and we're going we're gonna to go go into that. Oh, yep. But how long the facility been being built now? About a year, right? Yeah. Uh, one more thing is um, the Doobies for Boobies bracelets, they have a rose in the ribbon on the back. The rose is for the pink rose petal uh, pre-roll line. We're going to be selling these. They should be available at the Rhode Island dispensaries. And um, 100% of the profit from the bracelets will also be donated as well. Sick. Love yeah. it. So. And you can get the bracelets at the same places where you can get the pre-rolls. The pre-rolls, yep. <laughs> Are they actual roses? They're, so the line is called Rose Petals. The actual, uh, the papers are, uh, they're just white papers. And then the, the filters have the, 
the breast cancer ribbon um, it's right a on pink the filter. filter with the yeah. pink ribbon. But yeah. CMS, we you know our brand, we have rose, we have roses on the brand, so I figured rose petals would be a little branch off from the flower. So that's Cute. where that came from. Yeah. So um, and big thank you to all the girls that showed up uh, for the campaign shoot itself. Um, obviously, couldn't have done it without you and. Shout out Simon at the Islander too. And Simon for letting us use the Islander. But yeah, uh, watching all of them, all of you guys do the testimonials was. It was emotional as shit. Very a emotional. A lot of those women I like n knew and a lot of them I didn't know. Um, so it was like really great to get to know like people that like work in our community and like are around and like care about like similar stuff that I care about and similar people that I care about because like I think um like some people actually asked questions you know and knew more than I did about what we were showing up to do and didn't just like go like okay like pink dress this time yep awesome I have the address that cool. was crazy that was it was, <laughs> it was so fire that that it went that way like I'm so like yeah, the girls were so really the cool. girls were so like dope yeah. Yeah. Everyone was like super nice and like really like ready it, to go. And it was one of those things to yeah. where like uh you know Maddie uh she works at the Islander. Yeah, Maddie. She was not she was not trying to get on camera but one but I feel like the other girls like opened Inspired her up. Inspired her, yeah. 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 So and she hopped on camera and she gave us a whole thing that so was, that was That's nice so too. nice. Yeah. And, and but it was because, you know, you know, you and the other girls, you guys, you girls really stepped up and opened up, um, too. opened up. You, you guys were like fearless. It was like, it was right. That's the yeah. word. That's the word to describe it for sure. Yeah. I think like even if you're not comfortable in front of a camera, like if you're doing something for like a good cause with purpose yeah. yeah with purpose that makes it like a lot easier because yeah. like you can focus on that rather stand than the camera on it. lens yep. Yep. stand on that yeah i agree um <laughs> so 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 we're gonna run this uh doobies for boobies to get back to that quick we're gonna run it uh it's gonna launch october 1st and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make we're gonna get all the stores on board and for october we're gonna make a donation but then we're gonna run it from october to october to all really give long. it a full year Nice. So yep. we're going to kick it off this year. We're going to next year or, or actually the end of October, once we start that new year uh, from October to October, we're going to get some other cultivators on board and we're really going to take this thing and push it to its limits. Maybe I mean, it could, who knows? It might, it might get yeah, well, the vision is for to last years to come, you know? Yeah. There's really, we want to go to mass and we want to go to Connecticut and we want to I mean, eventually, who knows? Our, Nationally. Uh, yeah. Really. That's yep. the goal. And we have some big people behind us who, who believe in what we do over here, so it's good. So going back to Instagram and, and making your post, not that you, not that it's a requirement for your job, but because you like to do it, ha have you had any, any issues with cannabis content in Instagram? Yeah, so many. So right now, um, like, I haven't, like, gotten many new followers in, like, the past like couple of months actually because like every time I remove the videos that Instagram says are like keeping me from being like recommended in the feed they add more videos of mine that they want removed of yeah. keeping them recommended in the feed and right now one of those videos Ridiculous. that they want me to we remove to it's yeah. in I, I don't <laughs> it's one of my favorites listen, so I'm Instagram, like I'm not <laughs> I don't get it and I'm and this is coming from thumbs a down Instagram who's investing Boo. a lot of time trying to understand the guidelines and I don't get it. Um, I, I, I notice a lot too, <laughs> like some, some accounts will get away with stuff that other accounts don't. Yeah. And also being a cultivation account immediately gets you on some kind of list. Like I, this, I might sound like a conspiracy theorist with this one, but there's definitely some kind of algorithm where these social, like, especially Instagram is able to like sniff your content out and what you're trying to do immediately and they watch it like a hawk and the second they got something they they call it and then you'll see an, a, another account right after that scroll one post and they yeah. might not be a, a cannabis company but they're getting away with that or more and so it's just very inconsistent and i'm like having a hard time understanding right. i've caught a few shadow bands myself in the last three months i've lost my page three times three times and i've That's gotten it back three times 
It's like, why do they make you go through all that effort? Like, there should be something in your account after it gets removed the first time where they flag it and they say, like, don't automatically remove this again. Like, if the AI flags something, make a human review it before it takes the account down. Yeah. But like you said, you'll you'll get a notification saying take this post down. You take it down, three more pop up, and you're yeah. like, wait, 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 what's happening? And I'm like, literally, wait, I, I want to make you happy, but like, some of it is like the, the post posts. it wants me to take down right now is the conspiracy theory post that I made. That's a collaboration with um, Native Sun in Attleboro and Hudson. Um, we released like Lavender Haze with them in Attleboro around the same time that Taylor Swift was at Gillette Stadium yeah. for PAX. And um, our head of sales like called me up and was like, girl, can you do me a favor and make me like an Instagram conspiracy theory video? Um, like, I think that Taylor Swift loves PAX. I and think, I was yeah, like, I've girl, that, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen that video. Thank actually. you. Um, no. I worked really hard on that video. Um, she gave me like the main talking points and main ideas that she wanted. Like she gave me the conspiracy theory and I wrote the entire script for myself That's and fine. then went and Shit. shot the video. And I think like 45 minutes wow. and then edited it like that day. <laughs> That's dope. That, and the best, the best stuff happens. Like you got to be able to move fast. Yeah. Like I work really well under pressure, yeah, you know? I so um, like, you know, really lucky <laughs> for that, you know? Know, like it's yeah. both a blessing and a curse you know um so and i love that video it's one of my favorite videos that i made i love taylor swift especially a good old-fashioned taylor swift conspiracy theory well, like that that that'll keep me so up all night viral. in the shout best out, way shout out the swifties yeah literally that like it was so viral at the time too that like it was smart to like jump on the yeah, shout out impression. to Lauren Dawson. Um, she is a Swifty and a brilliant saleswoman. Um, and I was so happy to make that video. And now Instagram, after making me take down all these other videos, wants me to, oh. Oh, shit. I've, I just fumbled. Take down that video, too. And that's how it would make fumbled, me see, yeah. ha feel, how that joint just reacted. The cherry fell out. I was trying to ash it. Damn, dude. Rookie mistake. That's crazy. Cherry just fell out. I fumbled. Birthday. <laughs> well, I think we revived the the ounce birthday joint. Green knocked the cherry out of it, and it seems like it's hitting again. Ooh. Yeah, we had to make sure the house didn't burn down too in the process. We had to air it out a little bit because I I couldn't see. Um, but yeah, now we're watching. Uh, somehow we ended up on my scarred video, MTV scarred. So um, yeah, now we're just showing. I've never seen this. Perfect. Yeah, I think it was, like, I was like 16 years start. old. I didn't realize there was a reality show about this. Yeah, it was just kids like just getting extremely fucked up on camera. <laughs> MTV was just like, we're gonna make a show about this. And they all kind of progressed from there. We started making videos. We all have our own cameras. We always go out and film. I got a concussion right here. Were you not wearing a helmet? No, that was just long hair. Your dad really long hair. It was going good actually. They need to make cuter helmets so that people actually want to wear helmets. Because like I really think that's like a huge issue. Because the thing is that like if helmets looked fucking drippy, like people would wear helmets. The issue is that helmets make you look stupid. So no one wants no, to wear them. But that that was, that stigma is going away now. There, it, like nowadays, you'll see more kids wearing helmets, whether it's street skating or in the skate park, and like. But if they, they looked get, cooler, it would be easier. Well, they don't get their balls busted out. anymore. Look. They used to. I've been there. Oh my god. Yeah, ready? Watch oh my it god. Up. Oh my god. Yeah. As soon as I took up my arm, I see that it was totally bent sideways from where it broke, and the bone was coming out. <laughs> I just panicked. Hold on, hold on. I grabbed the hat though, ready? You grabbed no hat, the hat? No hat left behind. <laughs> That's wild. I just got caught up on the turn of the rail, and that sent me off the job. I was gonna split my head open, so I put the, the hand The sound is like it. so, um, like did they enhance that or is that what it actually sounded like on the video? They might be enhancing it a little bit, but you okay. could hear the bone snap. <laughs> Don't look at it, John. Oh, bitch. Oh, bitch. It's open. Oh. It was hella open. <laughs> look at you, but who's that? He couldn't stand it. Hey, shout out Jeff Dallas. Jeff Downis could not yeah. stand what he was seeing. Oh 
he t- he's telling me not to look at it. Here's my mom. Don't look at it. This is my fifth time breaking this arm, too, when this happened. I feel like that's not like traumatizing for everyone. My mom was like so over it at this point. <laughs> to the hospital and saw the bones coming out of the skin. I knew there was something seriously wrong and actually left the room immediately. <laughs> I had a compound fracture. Oh shit. Ulna, Everything separated. Both completely separated. Oh this is God. that so this is them sticking a, a into my a shot into my bone to numb it. So they could try Yo, who recorded all this cuz this is Jeff, my boy Jeff Dalmas. Shout out Jeff. Oh and shout out God. the surgeons cuz they said that's not allowed but they like they I told them I'm like bro I film everything please like I'm I'm Fucks, let me film this, and they said, okay. Uh, they said, damn, I feel real bad oh, for you about shit. your arms, so I'll let you break the rules. <laughs> the skin graft was gnarly. I was traumatized by that skin graft. I'll keep it a buck. In high school, that shit, ev- everyone called it the zombie arm. It looked like... Oh, yeah, shit. It, the skin color went back to my... It matched the skin over time. But back then, it just looked like zombie skin i was like is this gonna be forever you were like is this am i good yeah like, what i don't know if this is cool with me because <laughs> you wake up from surgery and you're just looking at that shit like what happened that is so <laughs> they had to put the skin so they took this skin off my leg actually because my arm was so big they couldn't close it anymore yeah and um they put the skin graft on, and then what happened after that was it got infected while I was wi- in the hospital still. And so they had to go back in right after, like days later, and they put a wound back in it. And the, I had to sit there for like three days, and there was just a vacuum, a clear tube that was just pumping nasty fluid out of my arm. And I just like sat there for days watching that. And then finally, my arm was like, they said five times as big as it was supposed to be. And it was just like no creases and nothing, just bubble. And That's fucking gnar, dude. Yeah. And then, get this. They tell me, they're like, John, we just put two steel plates in your bones, on each bone. If you ever break this arm again, we're going to have to amputate from where you break it. Nah. And I was like, wow. My life flipped. I, I, I thought I was going to quit skating. Ended up breaking my arm three more times after that. Same arm three more times with the steel plates in it. Next time I broke it, I was wearing a, uh, a wrist guard, and this time it broke where the plates ended. Because the pressure of where the plates ended Damn. snapped the bone up there. <laughs> and then broke it two other times after that. My stepdad had his leg amputated. Yeah, that and that's why I quit skating. Because, like... Wh- Eight, this is eight times total I've broken this, which is why I've also tattooed Don't Quit, Do It, right there. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, speaking of tattoos, that tattoo. This? Yeah. The ghost? That. Yeah. Um, so I'm so glad you asked. Actually, um, if you guys um, would pass me my phone, I can find, like, the um, meme. So, um, you know, all three of us have different that's fire it's lit cute little geese on our arm um and i met those um two working at starbucks actually before i got into the cannabis industry um one of them works in cannabis now um they're like you know many people go from working at starbucks to working in cannabis as i did um you know he's got that for you yo i feel like i feel like guys don't do the ma- like like homies. Don't do the matching tattoo thing enough. Nah. Yeah, they don't. Cap. Honestly, I love having a matching cap. tattoo. I got it with my my shout out Carlos. He was at the he was at you the. You got facility. a matching tattoo with Carlos? Yeah. What do you got? We both got. I got five on it right here. What? Yeah. I got five on it. I say like I get matching know. tattoos with your best friends because whenever I'm having a bad day, I look at this little guy and I'm like, damn, like there are two people out there that love me and would do anything for me. And that's so special. Damn. Like. I ain't got no matching t- tattoos with the homies. Oh, you, we'll do you it. gotta what fix that. Yeah. Fuck me, man. What are we doing? Oh, wow. Green gotta, stop sign? That'd be fire. Oh, no. We gotta, on we, the we next gotta, podcast, you guys should have a tattoo artist come oh, on and tattoo you guys. On that. Oh, we God. Damn. That. I'm down. I'm covered. I'm down. Wally's getting it, too. Wally's getting go. it, too. Get a go, dude. We're going we're gonna to need an Islander meeting on that one. <laughs> a little seagull. Where are the seagulls? 
Yeah, dude. Wait, Did you know that seagulls are actually um? Hold, okay, so I wait, saw this seagull fact. Hold on, go ahead. I saw this on um, TikTok. I'm pretty sure it's real, not 100 percent true, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's true. But I didn't double double fact check. But I'm pretty sure this is true. So seagulls um are like the first animal that was like discovered, like the first bird that was discovered to be gay. Um, so in, like, the 1980s, like, people were all like, oh, homosexuality is bad because, like, you don't ever see it in nature. You only see it in humans. And then scientists were like, actually, we've been watching these seagulls and, like, there will be, like, a late, like, two lady seagulls in a nest with too many eggs for one seagull to have laid. So these birds are lesbians and raising their little baby seagulls together. Um... Yeah, so uh, shout out to seagulls um, for being like the OG lesbian bird. And shout out seagulls for being my elementary school uh, bird or mascot, I guess you call it. Yeah. Yeah. OB gulls. Yeah, seagulls are the eagles of the sea. I like them. Like they get a bad rap because they'll steal your chips, but it's like, you know what? They're opportunists. Breaking news. Breaking news. Donald Trump's mugshot just dropped. Um, Yo, OB, you got to pull that up. Yeah, I, I have saw, not though. seen it. Okay, I did Actually, see it. I tell you, it's not breaking news. By the time you guys watch this, um, it won't be breaking news anymore. It's breaking to us. It was it's breaking, breaking news to It's me breaking news me. right now. When Wait, hold on. Can so I add a fact in? It. Can I add something in before we look at the mugshot? I was just on Instagram in the break. He was not at the jail one minute longer than 20 minutes. Oh, they, they did it quick. Came in, mugshot. Wrote him up, All right, dude. Let's pull, bounce. Let's pull this up, and we have to pull. You have to pull up the video of Trump leaving the penitentiary. Let's see it, or whatever it was called. I don't know if it was. Look at him. You are not gonna be able to escape this on the internet this week. It's gonna be me. Fulton, isn't that a uh, Johnny Cash song? Fulton. I'm not gonna lie. I think. Wait, that Khloe Kardashian's one? mugshot was better. It's that one right there. It's this That's one at the, the real top. one. That's the real one. Okay. Go to the right, no, Wally. Click that. that one. Look, look at him. You can tell he would, he thought about how he was gonna pose. Yeah, he you practiced. can tell he's trying to serve. He, yeah, exactly. Like he's trying so yeah. hard to I serve. Mean, face. He's trying to I mean, I mean, for Trump, I mean, dude, I mean, dude. <laughs> no, dude, but I'm, you you, you know. can tell. You know, Trump sat in like his suite for. Also, days I truly believe he's genuinely ones. heated. I, I truly believe yeah, he's trying to he's trying to serve that right now. Yeah, he's trying to serve heated. He's heated. Wait, Wally, <laughs> can you pull up? Type in YouTube. Yep. Go go to uh, Trump leaving Fulton. He put one eyebrow up. Bro, that's hilarious. You put, you put Trump. <laughs> he literally put one eyebrow up like the Rock. <laughs> Trump leaving Fulton with police it, escort. Like honestly, kind of almost looks like something that could be like put in with front of like an advertisement for like the next episode of a reality TV show? Yeah, right. It, like he, he's, like he's, it, it's like some WWF show. That, yeah, it's Trump like watch down, what's down, ha- down. what happens next like, week. Wait, on look at this. Trump look at trial. this is Trump leaving like, jail. I'm not... See this right here? What this is Trump. You can do SEO smarter and faster. With Wix, you can edit your meta tag. What's the, oh, the him leaving. <laughs> Sassy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> wow. This is nuts, dude. Well, oh yeah, they had to throw whatever that is in. Ambulance, just in case. <laughs> hey, quick question. While I'm thinking about it, did you go to Terp Town Throwdown? I did on um. Saturday, but not Friday. On Friday, I was, like, doing too much. Again, I was, like I told you, I was sitting in front of the computer giving myself headaches because I wasn't taking a break and stretching my eyes, which now I know about, so. Blue lens glasses will, yeah. will help and you. And also sitting there and going, like, apparently, which yep. I think is funny because I think it would make people nervous. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. So I heard there was, and maybe you don't know, or maybe you do, I heard there was some... I saw that in your brief, and I'm really interested for you guys to talk about that. Raids? Turp Town? What? All right, well, hold on, because I, I didn't, I don't know much about it either, but we have, all we could find about it was this screenshot. Um, can you, 
Obi, can you pull that screen? So, up are you familiar with the Instagram page, The Blacklist? No. So it's a big Instagram page that pretty much posts all arrests, raids, everything that goes on in cannabis. It's it's a very well known page. So, they, so all right, you want to read so it? So before this was up, okay, before this was up, there was a story post before this that said that there was undercovers that there was uh, uh, tents being raided, vendors running out of the place, and um, I mean, all that, all that stuff supposedly had gone down. Then this story went up about an hour or two later, which and then you we'll, can- we'll show it on Did the you guys screen. see the results? Of what? Of the the... Like, you know how you can no. go back after you answer, I don't it'll think, show you I'm like how sure people answered? I'm not sure posted the results. No, um, but if you click it, it would show you. Yeah, like if the story's oh. still up, if you voted it's in it. It's not still up. This was a few days no, ago. No, this was, um, yeah. But, yeah, we'll put the screenshot but, up. But I point definitely thing is, thought but, there were less people there than usual. Well, so, so right here, they definitely got in trouble for selling to undercovers. But to be fair, the cops went around Friday before <laughs> the event started and literally warned people they were sending out undercovers to make buys, to make purchases. So, so if you didn't know somebody, why would you? So that's the part, which, which is, this is the part of, uh, and I saw a post that High Times had put up, which means it said, legal cannabis does not mean no regulations. If they're letting you play by the rules... Play by the rules. That's pretty much where it's at. So Fire Festival is coming back. Speaking um, of like things that don't follow any regulations. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Flawless um, transition. I forget the guy's name. Uh, can you pull the article up? Co-founders Ja Rule and right Billy McFarlane. Yeah, link. Billy McFarlane. Ja Rule is a founder? That's crazy. It's a YouTuber. <laughs> So it's supposed to be a luxury music festival on an island somewhere, and people paid like thousands of dollars for tickets. This was viral years ago. Every like the Kardashians were posting that they were going. Everyone was like paid for promo to to say they were going. But they didn't pay for quality infrastructure. Nothing. Desperate people do desperate things. Whoa. Billy McFarlane. I mean that's fraud. We need to get the messaging out now that this is not a luxury music festival. Oh my god. There's mattresses all over the place getting. Bro, it's supposed to be you're, you paid for like a villa, like a suite, and then you're getting a tent that and it's a storm is happening. There's an angry mob. And you're on an island. You can't go anywhere. That was a really mean thing to say about Blink-182 yeah, right? fans. Yeah, Blink-182. Like... <laughs> Right, why do you have to come out blink? Like yeah, that? like, damn. <laughs> Shout out, um, what's his name in particular? <coughs> the UFO guy. Jeremy? No, from you. Uh, oh, yeah. Tom, Tom, De Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong, yeah. Shout out Tom DeLong. Speaking of Tom DeLong, astronomers now monitoring for extraterrestrial response to. Hello, is anybody there message that was beamed into space 40 years ago? So, um, click this link, Obi. Um, I seen this online the other day. So, yeah, we sent a message out 40 years ago. I think it's Japanese astronomers, and uh, this came out a couple days ago on the 22nd, and they said any day now that the response was going to be coming back. And, um, yeah. That's pretty great. You, you might actually be able to like Google that and um, 
check to see if the response ever did came or if they're still waiting on it. But um, oh shit, I was curious. What Fuck. did you think about? What do you? What's your uh, opinion on like the UFO? Aliens are definitely real, but like <coughs> you know, it doesn't seem like they like fuck with us. And like honestly, like. I kind of get it. Like, humans are a little bit messy. Like, you know, I get why they would be like, you know, like, they might try to study us or, like, shoot us or something. I get why they'd hang back, you know? But I think that aliens are just, like, so obviously real and that when people are like, aliens aren't real, ghosts aren't real, I'm like, okay. Um, so, like, d- that's so do cute. you, like, believe, like, when you hear, like, um, are there any, like, s- like, UFO stories that, like, you in particular like gravitate towards or believe or do what do you think like the ufo phenomenon is do you think it's like shooting stars all the time you think it's actual craft flying around that is i think like spotted i think sometimes it's like you know actual aliens sometimes it like could be like the government you know like not to be one of those people but like so when i listen to okay I'm I'm super into aliens, just so you know. I'll lay it out now. When I when I first okay. listened to, oh, you know what? Next episode, we're uploading my alien, my UFO videos that I recorded. Yeah, we'll release the, the yeah. UFO yeah. videos. Release the tapes. I mentioned I have, them in, in I episode two. Uh, I have sick UFO videos that I recorded myself. Yep. But what I was saying is Tom DeLonge. When he was on Rogan's podcast, he said all these things, and and then uh, like ninety plus percent of what he said turned out to be the truth. Eventually, yeah. And now that he just came back on with Steve O on the podcast, he said that the aliens that we're that we're talking about, they don't know if they're actually from outer space, but it's more interdimensional. Right. Yeah. Which I is crazy. <laughs> oh. Okay. <coughs> Which I'm, I still, I'm with it. Like, I believe that. And I'm also with the a- whole alien thing, too. Like, I think, it, I think it could be a number of things. Well, it's, cra- what's crazy to me now is that you can tell, like, you can go online and there will be videos that, that, uh, you know, the military has put up and the Air Force has put up of the U.S. literally being like, hey, these are flying around everywhere and we, we don't know what they are, but they're for real. And then I go to like, I'll be at dinner with like some friends and I'll be like, you believe in this? And they'll be like, nah, no. Man. And it's like, what? Have you, have you, yeah, have you like gone on the internet? Cause it's everywhere. <coughs> right. And it's also or like before that, TV. it was like in newspapers and on TV. Like before there was like a popularized internet, people were talking about aliens. Like they've been around. Yeah, and I think um, what is this? Even even a couple of weeks ago, with that guy David Grush, he testified before Congress. He went under oath, said we have um, UFO retrieval programs within the government. Did you hear about that? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> but I mean, like, there, so obviously guy, they know more than they're letting on, right? But, so there was a guy. He's um, I, I forget what level of government he is. He's retired now, but he he testified under oath in front of Congress and said that um, there's the government has secret um, UFO retrieval programs for when cra- uh, crafts crash, <coughs> and they have like a whole program where they they um, you know they're ready to pick them up. At, even in other countries, you know what's so it's crazy? Not just America, and they that is in, literally the somewhere. plot of Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. That is literally right the UFO. plot of Lilo and Stitch. He pops out of the UFO in the beginning, right? Um, so, like, the UFO, like, crashes itself, right? And then um, the big shark dude is from, like, the intergalactic space guys, and he's going out to try and find Stitch in this crashed oh, yeah, spaceship. Yeah. I just remember that scene of Stitch, like, popping over the hill, and he's, like, roaring with the UFO behind him. We but just had that whole I Vegas died. thing. That Vegas thing was crazy. Which one? The Vegas family in, in Nevada, or the, they landed in their backyard. There's footage. Yeah, of the... that was wild. Actually... Did you hear pull about up, that? Pull up the Vegas crash. Right. got to show it. Yeah. This. All right. So this is like a cop dash cam, and then the family. So there's multiple. No, the family, cop. Right? It oh, was body the cam. body cam. Oh, okay. All right. And there was a dash cam of, of this. So 
there's obviously okay wait hold on one sec before you play it see that right there did you see that just fall out of this see that yeah right there so there's this video on the ring kit there's multiple ring video cameras then there's the police dash cam of just a regular cruiser driving down the street with seeing that on a different angle and then there's a body cam of an officer on the side of the road yeah pull one of these up let's see I think this one I think this one has the sound some of them might have um, like the audio of the like of the, the, the clips aliens in their backyard and tonight a fierce debate is underway about the legitimacy of an alleged ufo crash good evening i'm denise feldes and i'm brian loftus our eight news now investigators reporting about terrified members of a local family who told police they had aliens in their backyard chief investigator george knapp here to piece it all together george knapp the goal as with george all knapp. things ufo the public debate is ferocious and ongoing was it all a hoax were we duped was it all an evil plot, a cover-up, all of the above? We took another look at the hubbub to separate wheat from chaff. The fireball That's captured the police on a body, police cam. body cam on the night of April 30th that was blue real. Plume. The American Meteor Society says witnesses reported seeing it all across the West, from northeastern Utah to Southern California. Another Las Vegas resident sent us a video of the same object recorded on her home camera. Investigation by Next Star Station KLAS. As the story of the Las Vegas incident spread across newscasts and social media, one of NASA's planetary defense officers weighed in to say, it was likely a small meteor that fell to earth hundreds of miles away from Las Vegas. Police videos obtained by 8 News Now indicate Metro officers were among the witnesses. This is the family, okay? They call in, they call the police, and they're like, hey, there's like 9 to 10 foot beings in our backyard, and they're just staring at us. That's scary. So now this is the police at the at the house. Yeah. And uh, they, they're like a... a Spanish-speaking family, um, but they, this they, might not be that family. They, they interviewed a couple. That's families. the family right there. All right, let, let play it. The appearance of the meteor that seemingly the triggered the events that followed. A frightened family called 911 and told police they had 10-foot-tall alien beings in their backyard. Officers responded to the home minutes later, interviewed the witnesses, canvassed the area, and cautiously inspected the backyard to look for intruders. One thing noticed by the officers was a circle in the soil. In conversations with us and in a podcast interview, Angel, the main witness, suggested the circle might have been created when an unknown object landed in the yard. Social media sleuths have since pointed out that the circular image has been viewable via Google Earth for more than a year. The family told us by phone they had seen suspicious vehicles with men in black types checking out their home. Turns out there is substance to that. A retired police officer fessed up on News Nation that he spent days staking out the house to see what, if anything, unfolded. What about those reports that Metro installed a special surveillance camera atop the house, presumably to watch for intruders, human or otherwise, or overzealous media? Turns out that's true as well. Metro confirmed as much in a statement to oh, Eight News crazy. Now's that's David crazy. Charms. The system stayed on the roof for days. What about the ring camera video with oh, the man. weird noise? The main witness, Angel, intimated to us the video was recorded by one of his neighbors and the audio was from the April 30th UFO crash. It wasn't. The security camera video was recorded in mid-April according to the man who first posted the clip. He doesn't want his name used but says the recording was from a fireball that passed over his home in the southwestern part of the valley two weeks prior to the alleged alien encounter. The family declined to be interviewed by us but members have spoken elsewhere and stick to their claims of seeing aliens in the backyard. Dozens of people on social that, that media was the video have right there. and dissected the, the video. They all have guns in their hands. of aliens spotted in the shadows. Police do not believe this was a hoax call which could be a crime if done intentionally. In the fervid swamp known as UFO world, our coverage of the story was itself seen as a dastardly plot to distract attention away from a prominent whistleblower named David Grush, who stepped forward around the same time. Grush unveiled his explosive on-camera account on News Nation, which is owned by the parent company of this KLS. Is the guy about In the spite UFO of the local news program. story, Grush's story was reported by news media all over the world. Curses boiled again. 
All right. So, I mean, well, so what do you make of this whistleblower, David Grush? He first reached out to me about a year ago. All right, so first off, shout out to George Knapp because that was such oh. an in-detail report. Like, you don't get yeah, he, anything he like didn't, that. He didn't try to sway one side or the other. No, he, he was, was like, like, this is this, yeah. but this is this. This is that, that's that. This is what we can prove, this is what we couldn't. There's angles of the family going into the backyard that are like... Yeah, they all pull out guns and they, like they take their own, their own cell phone videos and those went viral first on like social media. And um, It's crazy. Yeah, weird. Yeah. yeah. Don't feel bad if you have to quit. No, I'm like, I'm going to see it through till the end. And I'm just like, damn. This I'll quit is like... if both of you quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only quitting if she quits. Yeah. But I can't, I can't quit. Like, that's not like oh, my vibe. No. That's not like the, the vibe. That's, that's, that's probably not the way still that, like, damn it. how much? Like an eighth at least? An eighth, dude. That's more than an eighth. Yeah, I mean, well, well, it's like it's like an eighth. I don't know, dude. It's fucking something. Solid four. (laughs) The whole podcast studio is cooked right now. The problem is that now it's fucking, it's thick. Yeah. (laughs) This shit's thick. It's like getting to the point where it's like, oh, ow. Yeah, hurts a little. Hello. (laughs) Yeah. I wasn't trying to say that because they'd flame me if I, but I, I agree. Hurts the throat. Yeah. It's, Pause. Um, <laughs> it's like down there. Oh my God. Stop fucking playing. Sorry. <laughs> can't swear. <laughs> oh, this year, yeah, I'll be good with that, dude. I'm the first one out. <laughs> Cab quit. I'm done. Tastes like, um, nah, what, nah. Yeah, it's like the... It's the end. I feel like since Cap quit, I'm like, I'm cool with quitting now. Because, like, I just, I beat Cap at least. <laughs> it's your, b- I'll take it's your birthday. Cap. I'm good. Okay, like, I'm not going to finish it. But no. I am going to smoke at least a little bit more. So that way we don't all quit at the exact same yeah, time. Yeah, and then, too, yeah. like, dude, if you get, like, super stone, or Actually, let's flip that. If you don't get stoned for like the next seven days out of your ounce birthday, you're oh, good. Oh, I have to. I know you have to, but if yeah. in some imaginary world you didn't, you're okay. You earn some, you earn some credit <laughs> yeah, tonight. Yeah. I also, I've been like posting sure. every day about it, like writing like a little blurb about it every single day. I'm dedicated to the cause, you know? Yeah. I'm like, please celebrate your ounce birthday. It would mean the world to me. So, yeah. If you smoked weed on your 28th birthday, you know? Yep. If it's one, it's a hundred. That's how it is. Real friends will make sure you've got a whole 28 on the day of your <coughs> birthday. Right? Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> this you is you don't gotta smoke it all at once. You could save it after that, but just like a nice 28 on the birthday make sounds sure like a nice it. 28. If you got birthday. it, you got it. I'm fucking bad. <laughs> Instagram ads looked at me and also looked at my friend Rhiannon and was like, you girls wanna see the movie Shrek. That's something you're interested in. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. And it was like, do you want to see Shrek at Fenway Park? And I was like, it would be dumb not to. And then we checked in the price. It was only $10. So, like, and it was like, That's you could sit, like, they had, like, a special part of the... <laughs> oh, oh, thank you shit. so much. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cold water. Run it back. I'm doing another one. <laughs> <laughs> so they had, like, a special part. Of the like seats, like that was like anybody you could just sit first come first serve, and they also oh, handed shit. out Shrek ears to like the first however many people that came in. I was That's so dope. disappointed that I was too late to get Shrek ears because I was wearing like one of my all green fits. So yeah, because I saw a pi- I saw I think it was a video or a picture where yeah. the Shrek ears were borrowed. Yeah, I borrowed my Shrek ears yeah, because I got it. there too late, and I was like, damn, like if I had known they were gonna be like handing stuff out, and they also had like you know, specialty food and drink <laughs> items that were, like, Shrek-themed and, like, the entrance, it said Welcome to Duloc on it. They had, like, redone it. And it was so fun. Like, um, Lit. at the part nope. of the movie where they sing Hallelujah, everybody, like, took their phones and put on their phone flashlights and, like, did the thing you do at concerts. Yeah, that's dope. Like, that was amazing. 
thing. I was like, wow. I was like, That's honestly, real. like, Wait, this so is how Shrek was meant to be watched. Because even in the theaters, is I don't think... Is it just a think Shrek that. thing? Or do they, like, is that, like, a company that does movies so at Fenway? Or, the, like, you know the it? Alamo? Which I guess is a chain of movie theaters oh, that yeah, yeah. sell... Yeah, so they are the ones who put it on. Like, oh. before the movie, like, um, I think it was, like, their owner or something got... Um, like up in a Shrek like jersey and I was like why are you guys not selling merch this is ridiculous and it was like thank you guys so much for being here I hope you like come to the like our theater when it opens up and I was just thinking the whole time like but when are we going to get the announcement for the next Fenway movie night oh, so like I'm like, like I will come to your theater to support <laughs> you now that I've seen how great of a movie night you've put on absolutely no problem I would love to get like food and drink delivery to my seat while I'm watching <coughs> a movie that's a great concept but also like so is the Fenway movie night and they should do more yeah dude Fenway if... what happened to Shrek 2 that's the best Shrek Fenway movie night whoever runs that if you got to charge a little bit more than $10 a ticket to keep that, wait, you know, I, wait. I will pay, a, I will pay, more. Will pay more. Fenway got to tune into this. Let the people sit in the outfield grass with a blanket and watch the movie. Yeah, that would be sick. Big ask. Smoke like a little bit of weed. Big ask. Boston Red Sox fans are mad as hell. Well, that's, right. that's the other issue. <laughs> They'll just fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, it'll be tough. They could do what they do for concerts. And it, like it, cover it, it looked it up. cool just with the stands. Yeah. It looked pretty packed. Too. I feel like that would be so cool if it was like pull up with a blanket and sit in the outfield grass and watch right. Shrek. Yeah, dude, don't, yeah, dude, don't, 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 don't hand that to me, like, dude. I'm good. I would, I would just like to it's see like a movie they, there. I like, would watch Shrek Taylor's there again. Work. You know, That's I would what I'm go saying. and you know watch what? Shrek 1 again, the same exact movie that we already watched there once because it was such a good experience. It was so fun to see it in that. Yeah, exactly, in that vibe. See, me, I'm a fine and dory kind of guy. That's just where I was, that's where I clicked. But yeah, if I'm at Fenway and finding Dory's on, I'm, yeah. I'm, Hell yeah. They got my money. Yeah. We're gonna do yeah. the cake? Yeah, we gotta cut the cake. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been staring at us for long enough. Um, it would be rude to Greg if we didn't. Does yeah. anybody know what Greg from Greg's looks like? Does anybody know the Greg's lore? I, oh, yeah, that's a great question. Like, can we, can we pull yeah, that up? I'm can like, can you guys pull cake? that up while I cut this cake and try Who's and Greg, right? just serve you? Yeah, who is That's Greg? A really great How person. did he end up with such a cake? Okay, I can take a plate Boom. and then should we eat? I forget. Yeah, I didn't bring like forks or anything. Sorry, oh, yeah, guys. I, I did just bring cake. Um, but I think I'm gonna do an okay job. Getting it on plates. Okay, oops, only a little bit spilled though. Not that bad. Okay, excellent. I have one piece of cake. Who wants this one? That's gorgeous. Anybody want it? You want okay. it? Yeah, you I'll eat it. Yeah, one. I'll eat the first piece. Okay. Uh, I got utensils too. Oh, I was gonna just eat it with my hands for dramatic effect. Go you know? for it. It's like um, Matilda, that kid who he has to eat the whole cake. <laughs> Oh my god, that's if the I cake. Eat that whole thing. Wait, have you ever seen Matilda? Mm hmm. You know the kid I'm talking about? He has to. Yo, Wally, pull this up real quick. Bruce Bogtrotter. He eats the whole cake in Matilda, the whole chocolate cake. Well, alright, so he's like this little kid. Well, obviously. Yeah, you know you're Matilda, or how many times have you seen that movie? Yo, oh, Matilda's yeah. Matilda's my shit. Yeah. No, wait, you Matilda's know? my shit too, actually. So I love Matilda. I just don't know movie. the movie. Matilda that cake scene right here. This is this cake right here. Look at my okay. boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he gets movies. Yo, I bet you good. he knows my man Greg. But here the no, he gets movie. bagged <laughs> eating. It's like this cake is the one that's on the Dan, movie. Yeah. <laughs> Danny DeVito is the, this the is father. Beautiful. Yeah. This movie's <laughs> iconic, low key. Happy birthday, Dad Cowgirl. Honestly, inspiring. Thank Ten you guys cheers. so much for having me. <laughs> Yo. Ten cheers, Cap. <laughs> Boom. Yo. Oh, my bad. Cheers. Everybody, okay, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad Cowgirl. Ounce birthday. Happy ounce birthday, mm -hmm. Dad Cowgirl. Yeah. And that's episode three. Stop playing podcast. Is that a Dad, bro. Yeah. You mean Thank you. Coming. Thank you for coming. Our first official never... guest of the podcast, actually. That means so much to me. First ever. So, yeah. Pretty dope. Well, then this cake is as much for you guys as it is for me. That's the Greg Thank guy? You, Greg. Okay, let's oh. more learn more about Greg. Who was Greg?
Wait. Oh my God! May he rest in peace. He was a baker. Okay. He was in the egg and yeast business. Okay. Start. Okay. Yeah. And just it just kept it going. Shout out. Was this like his cake? uh, I'm gonna have to fact check this because where does this come into Greg's? Edmund Fuller. Fuller. (laughs) What the fuck? So he's just lying about being a Greg. What a fraud. That's crazy. Yo, shout out Johnny Greg. He founded the Standby Rhode Island chain in 1972. Known as Ted. He was known as Ted. And his name was Edmund. Who is Greg? (laughs) Try this. Why is Greg? Did Greg make the cake? Yeah. Where Greg came from. Please let us know. Like if you're from Rhode Island and you know the Greg's lore, like will you please explain it to us? Click it. Edmund Ted. No. Oh. Shit. Yeah, Edmund Ted. That's got to be him. He went by Ted. Yeah, he did he's the third, bro. Yeah, Greg's is a that. fraud, yo. <laughs> yo <laughs> like, Greg's is a, he's the, the third. Who the hell was Greg? It's yeah. It's a little disappointing. So, anyway. check this out. For many years, I was the face of Greg's, said Bob. So, Bob was the face of Greg's. So, there was never a Greg. There was never Why a Why did Greg? they decide never. to call it Greg's? Uh, ever? Like, they didn't even know a guy? <laughs> He was the face which made it attractive to investors. So, I, That's, huh. yeah. Did he just pr- Who is Greg? Bob Bacon had a pick. Yeah, so, like, the question still remains, like, who is Greg? Has no one's ever asked these guys who Has Greg nobody, is? Do people not go in there being like, I want to speak to Greg? Yeah, I bet you if you go in there and you're like, what's the deal with the whole Greg thing? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, sir... You need to leave. <laughs> They're like, we don't answer these kind of questions <laughs> yeah. here. Do you want your cake or not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, we low key might be onto something. How do we know if anyone's oh. ever asked Edmund Fuller? Who wait, Greg hold, on. Is? Hold, on. No hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The original Greg was a big dessert guy and he wanted to keep the tasty treats on the menu. What is that? Greg about? had nothing to do with the restaurant, but he was a big dessert guy. What? Who was he a friend of of that Edmund? That's true. Where, where did Greg get come into the picture from? Who knows Fuller Greg? is fully responsible for making Greg's known for his desserts. Fuller said the original Greg was a big dessert guy and wanted to keep the tasty treats on the menu, but Fuller wanted to make them better, and so he began to so, use all fresh ingredients, not canned and jarred contents. Wait. Greg, Greg himself had a flair for desserts. But the difference was when I started, I began baking everything from scratch. So basically... Was Greg an employee? I don't get did it. Did Greg, yeah, did Greg work there or was he just <laughs> some guy that I, It's not saying who it Greg was. Unclear. It sounded like Greg was the original chef who came up with the idea. And then this dude, Ted Fuller, came through and just slit his throat on the company. And they made, they kept it Greg's. They he changed said, the whole ingredients. The We're leaving the Greg Took behind. his idea. Dessert, great dessert place, but you're done. Yeah, because the story ain't the math ain't mathing on that one. But yeah, he's being so the the it's so vague. It's like Greg was a big dessert guy. Also, <coughs> who the fuck was Greg? And now I wonder. I miss you.